Hello, my name is Wandi Kazim from Wandi Me Media. Today we have Bamidele Owola, the CEO of Welcome to Africa International. Join me as I speak to Bamidele. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So Bamidele, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're going to the agriculture sector? I was born and raised in the UK and um, I, thought, I think I had a distorted um, and brainwashed image of Africa. And um, after some time I decided that I actually wanted to check Africa out myself. And um, I went to Ghana. Upon getting to Ghana, I realized that wow, Africa is not that bad, and Ghana is, is a reflection of that. And I felt that the image of Africa had to be changed. And I also, it was quite obvious that more investments would speed up the development of Africa. And I think what was interesting for me was that there were so many different opportunities. Like everywhere you look, there's an opportunity. So um, the whole goal of the company really was to change the way people see Africa and for us we disseminate information that is useful for investors and financial professionals, normal donors and we do this to encourage them to continue investing in Africa. So there are other sectors but why agriculture? So the time I was shooting documentaries and this got me closer to farmers and it also got me closer to the rural areas. So I had like a personal attachment and interest, okay. In addition to that, um, I knew that I needed the company to catalyze finance and investment into Africa, but I also realized it was important to have a focus. So I spent time studying each of the different sectors, and agriculture seemed like the one that was uh, most, um, most neglected and the most important. So, um, yeah, I just made that mission to focus on that sector. So you've been able to run summits around the world. You've been in Ghana in 2015, London 2016, Nigeria 2017. Can you tell us the very first exact one, how it was, how you planned it? The first one was a challenge because obviously it's the first one. Um, I think I was a bit, a lot younger, a bit younger than I was. So this was in Ghana. Yeah, it was in Ghana, and. Um, so there was a lot of, and I had not have I didn't have any track record. Now I don't need to talk so much these days, but then I had to talk for ages, write different different types of lessons. So um, but before I actually did the first one, I spent like a year going to different conferences related to agriculture. Any any conference that happens in the world around agriculture, I made sure I was there. So I went to about I don't know fifteen different countries, all in the name of trying to understand agriculture. So that. Attending all those different conferences in different parts of the world, it gave me um, a better insight to what's going on in the agricultural sector. So for the first one, um, I spent a lot of time researching, just trying to understand what the investors want to know and creating a program um, around that. And I had a team in Ghana as well that was helping to support the project and it supported logistics and all of that and promotion as well. I was pleasantly surprised when people actually started um, showing interest. It was quite amazing to have investors that would fly over and pay registration fee based on just some information that we put out there about African opportunities. So um, yeah, it was it was quite. I think it was the event that made me realise that okay, we can keep doing this, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, here we are. And was it that successful getting investors into I wouldn't say it was, I wouldn't say the event was successful, but it showed proof of concept. <laughs> and again, the investor turnout was quite impressive. Um, then we had a number in Nigeria. The investor turnout wasn't so impressive. Um, Nigeria was going for a recession at that time. But then they showed, for the investors that I met, because I went to different, different countries, and for that particular event, we worked with African Development Bank, so they sponsored some of it. Okay. So, um, but unfortunately, Nigeria was going through a recession and it, made, it didn't attract the business to fly in for a conference. But then after that, we did something in Frankfurt, and again, that had investors from all over the world. So, um, and then we had something again in Belgium as well that had the European Commission in, in, who attended and we gave a keynote speech. So, what are the key things investors are looking for in, in Africa? When we talk of investors, I, I, it's very important to realise that there's different types of investors, okay? You can have some investor who they will not invest anything less than $5 million and you have some who their, their range is between $250,000 and maybe $1 million, for example. So, um, in terms of the types of finance, 
there varies. You have some who want equity, you have some who just want to give a loan, for example. The kind of finance and the quantity of the investment, it varies, okay? But generally speaking, um, from my engagement with investors, people want um, companies that can prove that there's demand and there's supply in that demand, and that there's a good governance structure, um, they have experience. Um, if they've generated the income before, before they look for investment, that also speaks well as well. Um, people, investors usually want companies that um, are able to mitigate the challenges. But generally speaking, we're taking an average. Most of the investors that come to our seminars are looking for invest, um, investments whereby they're not fresh um, investments. The company has already done something and they're now looking for investments to scale up. So those are the type of companies we would be inclined to um, want to engage with. If I was a startup in the agri sector, yeah. probably about three years, and I'm looking to invest and probably like scale up my yeah, scale up my business, probably in agro processing, maybe my farm, I'm trying to gain some processing. Mm -hmm. What opportunities should I be looking for out there? That varies depending on um, your expected revenue okay. and some of the social impacts. As I was saying, there's different types of investors, different types of finance. You have some donors who would um, just give you a grant because you're empowering women and youth, for example. Um, you have some who may not actually give you physical cash, but they may give you technical assistance, they may give you access to the network, the machinery and the lights. Um, so I think, and then you have some that will want to join your executive board, we have some who would want to give you like a loan to finance some of your activities. So I think it's very important for businesses that are seeking finance to be very clear on what type of finance. People always just say, oh yeah, let's just get investors, let's just get investors. But it's actually extremely complicated to secure an invest investment. If it was easy, there would be lots of investments. Countries in Africa, do you think we're investment friendly? That's an interesting question um, because from my time here and from the organizing these seminars, I've met amazing businesses. And um, as a continent, we are investment friendly. Okay, um, it's also very important to properly see how we can identify the opportunities with the various finance that is out there. So, and before you actually match make an investment opportunity, there's a lot of things in the middle that needs to be done. Um, for as long as those steps can be understood and applied, um, yeah, I think investments will really, really um, uh, transform Nigeria and our African countries. Agriculture is a main focus for the government right now, yes. and people and we're looking for investment. We're opening mm -hmm. people invest into the sector, and we're encouraging Nigerians to invest into the sector. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think the government could do to make us more investment friendly? You know, appealing to other international mm -hmm. countries. I do feel that the focus should be on the private sector. I, I, from my own negative experience, I just see government as an inefficient, and I don't even know why you want to rely on them in the first place. Um, I feel that the private sector is supposed to influence what the government does, not the government influencing the private sector. So more focus should be on the private sector. Do you think there's some key policies the government could do to attract investment into um, our country? I guess some of the key policies that they're already doing is that when you're a foreign when you're a foreign investor, you have some tax debate, you don't have to pay any tax. But what I think the government can do is work on infrastructure. Um, the things that are in the hands of the government, they should really work on it and um, try to ensure it's developed. So infrastructure, energy, if those things are um, effective, then the private sector will frame and there will be more opportunities. There will be less risks, okay? Because when people think about investing in Africa, and particularly the African business sector, they consider all the various risks. And there's some risk here that doesn't make sense. There's some risk because you're going out, you're not sure of the road. These are not nice risks. <laughs> These are not normal risks. So um, I think the government should work on the things that it has on this uh, infrastructure, energy. So I think once those two things are on point, um, things will move forward. I think governments can also be a bit more supportive to um, private sector. By way of finance, by way of um, not necessarily directly giving people money, but there's ways that government can um, be involved in the value chain financing and they can reduce the interest rates for 
for I give it a zip that needs um, minus. So almost like what lifestyle is doing almost. But it's not for example paying 23%, the government has paid 7% of that 20%. So you pay so the, the government takes on the risk basically. Um, I think the government could be more supportive. In the agriculture sector, well, even in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, internationally, we have a lot of conferences. Mm -hmm. People are talking about agriculture. What makes Welcome to Africa International different? There's two things that make, or well, three things that make it different. One is that we're very focused on the finance and investment side of things. So, and I think one of the things that I've tried to ensure that my team um, applies is that we don't use generic um, topics, stuff like why is agriculture important to Africa? Why do we need to empower women? Nothing, I think we've passed that stage. We're very much focused on, on how does the currency affect global investments that go into the, um, into the continent? How do you mitigate the currency risk? How do, what type of, why, how do you combine blended finance for the purpose of investing in um, Africa's active business sector? How do you provide um, where should donor assistance be applied? So I think we try and um, use topics that appeal to finance and investment professionals and I think a bit more intellectually stimulating, okay, than the basics, okay. We don't try and get large, large crowds, okay. So initially, when I first started, I wanted to see 500 people and it had to be finance and it had to be this and it had to be the queen and all of that. The queen was a joke. But unfortunately that didn't happen and um, we didn't get a private few at all. And, but what we did get was a very intimate crowd. And I found people really liked the intimate setting. It made, it made networking a lot easier. And the fact that we had like a refined um, focus, everyone was on the, same, uh, on the same page. So sometimes I've been to conferences where I'm thinking about how do I see investors? And then there's some beside me thinking about crop protection. And you meet them and then they're talking about different things. And you want to meet the investor. They want to meet the scientists. Do you understand? So I think that intimate setting and that refined program um, helps. And then I think number three is that we take the time to show good opportunities. And when we first started, we would just show any opportunities. And then an investor was like to me, you can't do this, that. If you keep doing that, um, investors won't be coming to your program. So we take the time to show very good opportunities. And so that involves lots of Skype calls, understanding their business and understanding whether the platform is right for them. So you've been successful with this, I would say that. Mm -hmm. And you started in 2015, so that's like three years ago. You've been able to do this in Ghana, London, Nigeria, Frankfurt, and Belgium. Yes. So where are the next ones coming up? When and right. where? So we have something coming up in the Netherlands. That's around money change financing. That's on September 18 and 19. Um, then after we have what we call the back-to-back -back IP finance training series. Um, that is four different um, small seminars for 30 people. One is on blended finance, one is around public slash donor financing, one is around Islamic financing, and the last is around value chain financing. And these particular events be specific to the Nigerian environment as opposed to the one we do outside of Africa, where it's a bit um, gen generic. Are you going to take that to Ghana as well? My God, special break. <laughs> yes. Apart from being young and a woman, you aim to do this. So, what, do you, what advice do you have for other people? That we need to start up a business in the agri sector. And most importantly, maybe focus on events. What advice would you give them? To believe in yourself, um, stay very persistent. I'm extremely persistent. I really see, have really have a vision as to how things should be. I'm working towards that vision. I don't really see anything else. For me, I don't think about money. I try to think about value, and always think about value. These days, I don't need to talk so much as I used to. I think the, the proof is there. So I always try and stay um, knowledgeable, okay? not just about your work, but just, just normal things, how to treat people, how to manage people, how to manage money, that's very important. People sometimes ask me this question um, based on the perception that if you're young and your woman is a bit difficult. I wouldn't say any challenge that I've had um, during this journey has been normal challenges that entrepreneurs face. It wasn't because I'm young and I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. It was normal challenges that I'm yeah. facing. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't want any young woman to think, oh, I can't do this because I'm a woman. That for me is disheartening. 
Bye. Bye.